Another new type of graph that we look at in this chapter is called a two-way table. And a two-way table displays data from two different sources where you might take a survey and you might ask people two different questions. Like, for example, you know, people took a test and we asked them, did they pass or fail? And then also a follow-up question was, hey, did you study, right? Because sometimes it might not be enough information to just know if someone passed or failed. Sometimes people fail and they studied, and sometimes people pass and they didn't study. So we can't really assume that everyone who passed studied and everyone who failed didn't study. So you sometimes want to ask people follow-up questions about their answers, and we can use that to display in a two-way table. Now, a bit of vocab, we have something called a joint frequency, and a joint frequency are the numbers that are inside the table. So 21 people passed and studied, two people passed and didn't study, one person failed and studied, so that's kind of really unfortunate for them, and six people failed and didn't study. And so these numbers inside the table are called joint frequencies. So the question that we have is, in uh, the table, how many students in the survey studied and passed? So we're looking for the intersection of studied and passed, that's right here, at 21. So the answer is 21 students. Now you might want to know the total number of people who passed and the total number of people who studied, and those are called marginal frequencies. So in number one, we have to find and interpret the marginal frequencies for the survey above. So remember, find means to like get the number, and interpret means to write a sentence using the number in the story. So it gives us this little tip. It says to create a new column and a new row for the sums. So I'm going to go up to my table and I'm going to add a row at the bottom called total. And I'll add a column at the top called total. And what that's going to be is the total for each section. So the number that goes here is the total for the people who studied, right? Because I'm just going to add down. So there were 22 people who studied. There were 8 people who didn't study. There were uh, 23 people who passed and 7 people who didn't pass, who failed. One thing, one little tip, these two numbers, these two totals should be the same. You see they both add up to 30 because that's how many people were surveyed. So you can always double check your totals or your marginal frequencies by making sure they add up to the same number. All we have to do now is just write those numbers in sentences. So the first one is 22 people studied. Okay, the next one is eight people didn't study. Now we have the other two. There were 23 people who passed and there were seven people who failed. Okay, let's move on. All right, so they give us this information. Uh, they tallied some people, that, whether they ride the bus or don't ride the bus, and they were between the ages of 12 and 17, and it wants us to make a two-way table that includes the marginal frequency. So we're gonna have that total column as well. So the way that you decide how to set up your table is you think about the two questions that were being asked. So the first question is, do you ride the bus? And then the next question was, how old are you? It doesn't matter which one goes on top, which one goes on the side. So let's just set it up like this. All right, pause and copy my chart. Now we're just going to put numbers in place of our tally marks. So there were 5, 10, 15, there were 24 people in this age range that ride the bus. So let's just do that, 24. There were 12 people in the 14 to 15 range. And there were 14 people in the 16 to 17 range 
which gives me a total of 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Okay, now, now let's go to don't ride the bus. In this section down here, there were 16 people who don't ride the bus in 12 to 13. There were 13 people in 14 to 15 and 21 people in the oldest age range, which gives us 20, 30, 40, 50. Oh, okay, so 50 of each. But now we need to total across. That's 40. That's 25. Uh, that is 35, which, uh, just double check, they should each add up to 100, and they do. Okay, so that's, that's done. Moving on. Um, for each age group, in example three, what percent of the students ride the bus? Do not ride the bus. Determine whether there is a relationship between age and riding the bus to school. So I'm going to actually make another chart. So follow me on this one. All right, so the chart is very similar. I took off the totals section. Um, but what I did was I just put the totals over here because it says for each age group. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how many people in each age group are doing it and then find that as a percent. So what we're going to do, right, to find this number is it's not 24. It's 24 out of 40. And 24 out of 40 as a percent, well, you just do 24 divided by 40 and then move the decimal two places to the right, that is 60 so 60% of the people in this range are riding the bus. So that now we just do the other number, right? 16 divided by 40 should be 40% because that adds up to 100. But I'm just going to double check. Okay, now we just do the other one. All right, so 12 people out of 25 is 48%. And 13 out of 25 is 52%. And then the last one is 14 people out of 35 is 40%. And... 21 out of 35 is 60%. So the last thing says determine whether there is a relationship between age and riding the bus to school. So as you can see, as the ages get larger, as people get older, they're riding the bus to school less and that might make sense because they have siblings who can drive them or they drive them or their friends drive them. But to answer the question whether there is a relationship between age and riding the bus to school, the answer is yes. As people get older, they are not riding the bus as much. All right. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.